Stephen Edholm here from SkillCult.com and today I'm starting a series of videos on potato onions. Um, this video is going to be what potato onions are and the different varieties. Future videos will be uh, planting, growing, harvesting, curing, storing and eating, stuff like that. So I'm here in the garden to harvest the last of my potato onions. It's the uh, second week of September. And just a short version of what a potato onion is, it's an heirloom onion variety that grows from a bulb. So you plant one bulb and then that divides into like a nest or a cluster of onions. So the way these grow is that they have small growing points inside, kind of like eyes. So as you can see in this one, it's almost like this is made up of a bunch of bulbs crammed together. Like there's one here, one here, one here, and then maybe two or three in right in here. And there's a major division down the middle here, right here, which I'll talk about in a minute. But each one of these is a growing point. So this will grow an onion, that'll grow an onion, that'll grow an onion, and this will grow two or three onions. So one thing about potato onions that's not always great is they do this dividing thing. Like this one is obviously divided into two bulbs, right? But if I break these open, there's actually a whole nother bulb here. And that has developed kind of a dry sheath in between, which is good. But sometimes they don't, or they kind of halfway do that, and then they end up with mold. Okay, so here's a good example. There, there's some black mold growing right in here, in that one. And that could spread and end up spoiling the onion. So a goal in breeding potato onions would definitely be to reduce bifurcation like that, or splitting, sorry, and encourage, you know, more uniform, rounder bulbs like these. So once they're cured out, these tend to keep really well, but during curing and also during storage, you lose a certain percentage to this kind of mold and rot. So these are my onion drying tables, and I'm going to show you a couple of different kinds of potato onions. So I've done a whole lot of research on potato onions, and I did a long uh, research article that's on my blog. Really, in all the stuff I read, they only really talked about two. One was the yellow potato onion, which is this, and the other is white potato onion. And unfortunately, I thought I had some white potato onions to show you, but I don't. Uh, it looks like I've let them die out completely. But that's because I don't really like them that much. I think they were grown more for the super earliest crop anyone could get. The early white potato onions sold as kind of like green onions. I don't really have much use for that personally. They're very different, the two of them. I don't really know what else to say about the white potato onion. It doesn't keep as well as this one and it has way more tendency to flower. In fact, I think it just flowers pretty consistently. The yellow potato onion, though, has some really cool traits. Okay, one of them is that it rarely flowers. So if this flowers, it would have like a stalk or even two coming out of the middle of this, and that would cause it not to keep as well during storage. So that's a pretty cool trait that they don't flower. Also, they're not putting any energy into that. They're just putting energy into making bulbs. They keep extremely well. So once they're cured out, you know, you lose a certain amount during curing. That's a given for pretty much any onion I've ever grown. But this one's not, you know, it's not too bad. It can go up to maybe 10% losses during curing and storage. Otherwise, it keeps like a rock. So these things will be, you know, nice and firm in the spring still, which is good because I usually plant them in the spring. And then the other thing is that they're very cold hardy. So the yellow potato onion is very cold hardy. I know a guy who grows them in Alaska. They've been grown, yeah, up... Um, you know, into Canada and in the Northeast. So they're extremely hardy. They're often even fall planted in cold areas and then held up to keep them, you know, kind of protect them a little bit. And then the dirt's pulled away so they can grow in the spring. We'll talk more about that in the planting segment. So the negative traits about these are size. So you can see these are fairly small. You can definitely grow them bigger than this, but they also often have divisions. So this one definitely has a division under the skin. So not only do you have to cut it open, but you have to break that apart and then peel it down a little bit more before you use it. Here's some real monsters, but this, this is definitely unusually large. Here's another one here. But that's about it. So positives, they rarely flower. They are extremely cold hardy and they store like a rock. So at some point I thought it would be cool to save seeds from the yellow potato onion because they do occasionally flower and you can kind of trick them into flowering too. 
and cross them maybe with other onions and get some seed going. So I looked on the internet and it turned out someone had already done that. So one year Kelly Winterton's yellow potato onions went to flower and he just let them flower. Uh, he says they were self-pollinated, that there were no other onions around. And he grew the seeds out and got, you know, different colors and sizes of bulbs out of those. This is one of those. This is called the Green Mountain Multiplier. And it solves some of the problems that, you know, you'd want to solve in a potato onion. It's larger, as you can see. These are pretty nice, hefty bulbs. It also seems to have fewer divisions. You definitely get these ones with divisions, but they're just not as bad. You get more of these pretty nice discrete bulbs like this one. The downsides to this, this variety are that it tends to flower. I think I see that as a negative trait. If I plant these in the spring, they don't flower as much and they do pretty good. But if I plant them in the fall, like most of, most of them will flower. The other thing and the main negative to me is that they get a lot of mold. Um, under the skin and between the bulbs, especially when they're stuck together like this. I have had losses up to probably 25% um, trying to cure these out for storage. You can see under the skin of this one, there's some black mold and there's some on this one too, under the skin. And the yellow potato onions seem to get that too, but they don't seem to rot as much when they get it. So definitely these have shown in the last three years or so not to cure out nearly as well as the yellow potato onion. So this is a very rare variety. They're hard to get. The only places I know to get them right now is I sell them on eBay and Kelly Winterton um, sells them too, but he doesn't produce that many. So his, his goal isn't making money. It's just to get the, the potato onions out there really. He's, he's a really cool guy and uh, he's just kind of on a mission all in all, I think this variety can still work pretty well for homesteaders. If you use a lot of stuff in the fall for onions, for canning, salsa, and processing, like maybe tomato sauce or whatever, you can just use all these divided bulbs for that and cure out these nice ones and just select the best ones for your winter storage. Okay, thanks for watching. I just wanted to introduce those real quick. So again, for the heirloom potato onions, there's basically the yellow potato onion and the white potato onion and they're very different. The white potato onion didn't suit me, but it may suit you. I think we should, you know, people should keep growing it uh, just to preserve the genetics because it's a valuable heirloom variety and it's pretty neat. Um, so yeah, if you can find that, you give it a try. And then for modern ones, I'm working on some, I don't know what I'll come up with. I pretty ruthlessly call mine out if they seed, so I may not come up with anything. I don't know, and I may not continue doing it. I'm not sure, but I'm down to about 15 bulbs right now. and. I'm not sure if any of them are gonna make it uh, through the whole trial. So, um, Kelly Winterton also has multiple varieties. Uh, he has a Green Mountain Multiplier, but he's selected several more, I forget what they're called, but you can look him up on the, on the net. Um, all of them are rare, they're all hard to get, um, but eventually I think they'll make their way into the seed market, um, where they'll also be hard to get, because even yellow potato onions are hard to get. Um, once, like in the fall, all the supplies just seem to sell out right away. Um, I'm usually the latest person that has them. Let's see, oh, one thing, beware on eBay. There's a guy selling that's been selling for years collections of multiplier onions from Canada that appear to be just little sets for onions, like onion sets. They're really super uniform. He has like red, white, um, and yellow. And I've gotten them, and I've talked to other people that have gotten them, and they wouldn't grow. Um, I'm pretty sure they're definitely not the same as the yellow potato onion I grow at the very least, but I'm pretty sure they're just buying and reselling like little um, potato, like, sorry, just uh, little onion starts. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, well, I don't know. I guess that's it.